Live from WSLS, this is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Breaking overnight, Tiger Woods awake this morning after a serious car crash. What we're learning about his injuries and current condition. Former Capitol officials grilled on the insurrection that took place in the room where it happened. These criminals came prepared for war. What lawmakers will focus on today during day two of the hearings. Addressing community concerns, the issues the Lynchburg Police Department faces and what lies ahead for the Hill City. Good morning and happy Wednesday to you. Made it to midweek. We thank you for waking up with us. I'm Patrick McKee alongside Jenna Zipton and Rachel Lucas. If you enjoyed yesterday's weather, you're really going to enjoy today's. Chris is tracking the best day of the week. Yes, exactly. By far and yeah, starting out chilly this morning, but by the afternoon, Things are looking really nice for you. Starting out just fine from our Virginia Tech early in Skycam over the Star City. Traffic seems to be moving pretty smoothly there on 581 and 220. Roanoke currently at 36 degrees. Blacksburg, Lynchburg, and Danville right at or just below freezing this morning. But again, we'll trade that for some 60s this afternoon. The morning planner at the bottom of the screen showing that temperatures already make their way close to 60 degrees by about lunchtime, so nowhere to go but up from there, right? Roanoke 67, Salem, Smith Mountain Lake at 66, Delville and Rocky Mount at about 65. Perfect afternoon for a little bit of grilling. Temperatures will be in the 60s by about 4 p.m. and then gradually working their way down from there as we go throughout the evening. Breaking overnight, golf legend Tiger Woods is awake and responsive this morning, recovering in the hospital after a rollover crash yesterday. Authorities say the SUV Woods was driving, went off the road and flipped over. You see aerial video of it there. We've learned the golfer suffered significant injuries to his lower right leg, including open fractures. Woods also received treatment to his injuries on his foot and ankle. Police say the passenger compartment was pretty well preserved with the crumple zones and the airbags helped by the fact that Woods was wearing his seatbelt. There was no evidence of impairment, so subsequent to that, we're not going to make any. Uh, there was no effort to draw um, blood, for example, at, at the hospital. Woods is currently at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. We'll keep you updated throughout the day as we learn more here on 10 News and on WSLS.com. Hearings continue today as lawmakers look closer at the January Capitol riots. Today, lawmakers will focus on the rise of domestic terrorism to the health and wellness of employees and assessing damage to the historic building. On the first day of hearings yesterday, former law enforcement officials were grilled by senators about how an angry mob was able to overrun what was supposed to be one of the most secure buildings in the world. The former Capitol Police chief said his intelligence division received the FBI bulletin, but it didn't pass up the chain of command. Focus going forward needs to be on the efforts to improve intelligence and the coordination of security measures between all involved agencies. Senators are also calling for better training and equipment for Capitol Police, as the former chief revealed many officers did not have riot gear or training in how to respond to a mass intrusion. A man's in jail this morning after a more than seven hour standoff in Pennsylvania County. This man, Paul Michael Dalton Jr., was arrested, uh, current, uh, surrendering with his hands up. Dalton now faces three grand larceny charges. Two of them are for breaking and entering and one for destruction of property. Investigators were serving an arrest warrant when Dalton barricaded himself inside a home with a gun. Five people are now in custody that were wanted for questioning in connection to a Lynchburg homicide from January 21st on 12th Street. Police continue to investigate the death of 28 year old Samantha Robinson. Police arrested Diamante Taylor and DeAndre Strange on charges unrelated to the homicide. Lynchburg police have an action plan in place to strengthen their bond with the community. This action plan was the result of civil unrest nationwide following the death of George Floyd. Police Chief Ryan Zudema says part of the plan is listening. They held six sessions last year for the community to express their concerns. Some of those issues include transparency, diversity within the department, and better training. One major topic Chief Zudema is working on is community engagement. There are some areas of our, our community that very honestly, and this will sound like an oxymoron, but they feel over-policed and under-protected. 
and that's not what we want. We want our folks to realize that people wearing a Lynchburg Police Department uniform are gonna show up not just when there's a 911 call or not just when something bad is happening. So he says that will go a long way with people and also stresses regardless of the situation, there is dignity and respect for everyone. A woman who officers say tried to avoid getting arrested still ended up in handcuffs in Roanoke yesterday. Officers say they tried to pull over a car that 33 year old Lindsay Burdett was in, was in, but the driver kept going. She was wanted on drug charges. U.S. Marshals say the driver, Jeffrey Knight, hit a deputy's car, continued driving, and then later hit a telephone pole and another car. Burnett was arrested on Shenandoah Avenue. 605 this morning in what's news today. Governor Ralph Northam will provide updates on the Commonwealth's continued response to COVID-19 and vaccination efforts today. That begins at 11 a.m. You can watch live here on WSLS 10 on our Facebook page or website. First Lady Jill Biden will travel to Virginia today. She'll visit the Massey Cancer Center at Virginia Commonwealth University. Dr. Biden will meet with scientists, researchers, and community leaders to learn more about their work to foster more inclusive cancer research, improve access to cancer care, and more. The new Roanoke Fire EMS station number seven opens with a virtual tour and grand opening. After more than a year of demolition and construction, this replaces the old station built in Grandin Village in 1922. <clears throat> you can watch the events at noon. We have a link on WSLS.com. Today marks five years since an EF3 tornado severely damaged the evergreen community in Appomattox County. More than 100 homes were damaged or destroyed. One person was killed and seven hurt. The storm was on the ground for 17 miles and had winds of about 140 miles per hour. According to NOAA records, there have only been 41 EF3 tornadoes in the Commonwealth. Paving repairs on Interstate 81 in Pulaski County could interrupt your commute today. From 9 to 3, there's going to be alternating lane closures southbound between mall markers 98 and 105. Community Arts Reach and the GFWC Star Woman's Club will honor African-American sheroes. The online event will include a virtual presentation and performances starts at 630. We've got a link for more information on WSLS.com. God's Storehouse will be given a large grant today. It will receive $10,000 by the LB Charitable Foundation. Money will be used to allow the organization to buy food to be given out to the community. Governor Northam was in Southside yesterday to tour the damage from last week's ice. He was there as utility crews continued to work to restore power. Some people in Charlotte Courthouse area have been without power for the past 12 days after the recent ice storms. Northam says the state's working with the Department of Emergency Management and FEMA to come up with a solution. With all these hard working folks, whether it be VDOT or our electric companies or our, our police officers, uh, we need to you know, talk about how, how it happened or what happened, how we responded to it and, and what we can do uh, to, to uh, do better the next time. Crews hope to have power fully restored to the area by the weekend. Pennsylvania County is waiving landfill tipping fees for 90 days after the winter storm. This waiver will extend through May 14th as part of a local declaration of emergency. The landfill is located on Rainbow Lane and is open weekdays from 730 to 330. Normally the tipping fee is $41 per ton. New this morning, landlords in Virginia may soon face a hefty fine if they unlawfully evict a tenant. Right now, Delegate Sally Hudson says the penalty is low for changing the locks, cutting off heat or electricity, and forcing a tenant out. She proposed a bill that would levy a $5,000 fine or four months rent on any landlord who tries those tactics. Where the goal is to make it high enough so that no landlord ever does it. Um, our goal is not to punish the landlord. We're trying to deter them from breaking the law in the first place. We want to make sure that everyone has a full incentive to use the courts. The bill heading towards a conference committee where the Senate and House will iron out details. A new bill passed by the General Assembly would take away gun rights for those convicted in certain domestic violence cases. That proposal would keep people with certain domestic violence convictions from buying or transporting a gun. Anyone who violates the law would face a class one misdemeanor. 
The bill received support from the House and Senate. It now heads to the governor's desk. New this morning, the Virginia General Assembly also passed two bills that repeal the ban keeping some health insurance plans sold from covering abortions. Although the legislation will allow insurers to provide these services, it will not require it. If the bill passes, this could lead to more expensive plans since more services would be covered. Federal funds can't cover abortion costs due to the Hyde Amendment, except for specific circumstances. Saturday is the last day of the General Assembly's special session. 610, more people work from home than ever before during the pandemic. However, we'll explain why one survey finds office space in the Star City is actually increasing. The new at 645, we're taking you on the search to find the name of the woman who made a rare artifact on a New River Valley plantation more than 150 years ago. Plus, the coronavirus impacts every person differently. We'll break down the lingering effects COVID could have on some. And starting out this morning with the coat, but as we go throughout the day, you peel away at the layers with Bedford, Covington, Lexington, 65, Pulaski, 64, Floyd right at 60 degrees. We'll compare today's wind to what we saw yesterday. Plus, we'll show you who could see a little bit of wintry weather late Friday. That's next on Virginia Today. Know your zone. Get a tailored forecast specific to where you are. Your local weather authority alerting you to the next weather maker moving into your zone making it easier for you to plan ahead. Know your zone only from WSLS 10. WSLS 10 News, the proud winner of the 2020 Emmy Award for Best Newscast. 614 now, most people who get COVID-19 recover in about four weeks, but for others, COVID symptoms can linger for months. Doctors say there's a wide variety of long term health issues that may linger with an infection. Some people suffer from persistent fatigue, headache, shortness of breath and chest pain, while others may experience brain fog or memory issues. Right now, there's no way to tell who's going to experience ongoing symptoms after fighting the virus. We don't really know right now how many patients uh, will develop these long COVID symptoms after they have had this infection. Studies look at anywhere between 10% and 80%. So there could be a large number of people who are experiencing symptoms well after, again, that four week time period when we expect people to normally recover. Some medical centers have started special clinics to treat these so called long haulers. New this morning, calling all Hokies. Today, Virginia Tech is bringing together the entire Hokie Nation to give back. Ted News reporter Megan Woods joins us live with how you can participate. Good morning. So the countdown begins at noon today for Virginia Tech's annual 24 hour fundraising event Giving Day. Here's how it works. When you visit the Giving Day site, you'll see donations roll in real time and there will be a map to see where Hokies are giving from all across the country. Early giving has already started. The point is to show Hokie pride by giving back to make sure Virginia Tech can continue changing lives. You can give to colleges, departments, scholarships, student organizations, and many more funds. There are hundreds you can choose from. It's a great way for Hokies to connect to the aspects of Virginia Tech that they feel the strongest about. You can give to your favorite fund throughout the year, but the actual Giving Day event ends tomorrow at noon. We'll have the link on WSLS.com later this morning. Now, choosing where to give is a little overwhelming for some. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, we give you a head start, especially if you want to help those at Virginia Tech who are impacted by the pandemic. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. And a happy Wednesday to you. Things starting out chilly out there. Roanoke and Covington 36, Blacksburg, Danville, Lexington 31, Martinsville and South Boston and Lewisburg. The cold spots on the map at 29 degrees, but we trade that for a really nice afternoon. So if you plan on taking a walk this morning, maybe pack the layers. Temperatures at about 8 o'clock, 35 to 40 degrees. Lunchtime as you're walking off lunch a little bit, 55 to 60. We're all in the 60s this afternoon, just about picture perfect weather, especially when you take into account that the wind 
is not going to be nearly as bad as it was yesterday. Gusts were about 30 to 45 miles per hour yesterday afternoon. Today, about 15 to 25 miles per hour. So breezy, yes, but not necessarily howling like it was at times yesterday. We'll start the morning out with some clouds. Then we see sunshine breaking out as we head into the afternoon. As we head into tonight, that's when we see the limited chance for a little bit of rain, especially as you head into some of the mountains. Then by tomorrow morning, things are looking up for us. So most of our Thursday is looking dry. Temperatures tonight, 40 to 45. That's really mild considering the fact that it is the end of February. Not quite as warm tomorrow, but still mid to upper 50s for most of the area. We'll take it, especially with Friday coming in with another storm system. This is going to be a fairly weak one sliding to the south. Limited cold air and limited cold ground. So there's at least a chance for a little bit of snow mixing in for parts of the area. Most of it, though, appears to be rain. So let's break that down zone by zone in the Highlands and the New River Valley Friday evening. It's possible that you see some snow or some sleet mixing in. Doesn't look like a big deal. Small chance in the Roanoke Valley, especially some higher elevations, but it's unlikely for Roanoke City, for Lynchburg, or for Southside. So again, mostly looking at rain settling in Friday evening. That sets us up with a fairly warm pattern, though, or a fairly wet pattern, I should say, heading into the weekend. High temperatures in the 50s. See some showers around at times Saturday. Probably not going to be raining the entire day. Sunday, not looking like the greatest day, though still temperatures in the 50s. Rain carries over into Monday morning, but even still, Temperatures mid to upper 50s by then. Enjoy today in the Lynchburg area, upper 60s, about a 10 degree drop off by tomorrow afternoon, and then we drop by another dozen degrees on Friday. Highs only in the 40s with rain arriving later in the day. Some showers around at times Saturday, especially through about midday. Then Sunday looking pretty wet for us with rain totals looking to be at about an inch to perhaps as high as two inches as we go between Friday and Monday. But we're starting out dry this morning. Let's see how things are on the roads on time saver traffic. Much of the region is looking OK. We're still following this one accident out of Wythe County. This is on Interstate 81 on the northbound side near mile marker 73. We've got the north left lane and left shoulder currently closed due to a tractor trailer crash. Some delays a possibility around Withville this morning. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. The standoff between Australia and Facebook appearing to be coming to an end. The social media giant says it will restore news content for Australian users after striking a deal with the government over a proposed law that would require platforms to pay for linking to news content. And elsewhere, Tesla's rival Lucid Motors planning to go public via a SPAC. The luxury EV company merging with Michael Klein's blank check company called Churchill Capital in a deal that values the combined company at about $12 billion. And meanwhile, only the maker of the super popular plant-based milk alternative, Oat Milk, submitted its plans to go public with the SEC. The vegan drink maker did not provide any further details about the size or price of the offering, but reports suggest that Oatly could be aiming for a $10 billion valuation. And that's your Cheddar Business and Tech Update. I'm Kristen Schuller from Cheddar Studios in New York. Still ahead, giving a voice to the past and a woman back her name. How local historians are searching to identify an enslaved, enslaved woman who made a rare pre-Civil War coverlet. Plus, an unlikely result in the middle of a pandemic. What one survey finds, there was an increase for office space in Roanoke during 2020. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. 624 now after a year of working from home, a new survey found demand for office space in Roanoke actually grew last year. That's rather surprising. Yeah, that's the finding from Poe and Cronk Real Estate Group's annual survey. They looked at occupied office spaces across the city. Researchers found a 1% bump in 2020 and a 3% jump in interest for the Cave Spring area. The Real Estate Group's president says companies from New York and Charlotte are relocating here. We're an outdoor based community. We've got a low cost of doing business. We've got a low cost of living. Um, we've got a, a, a great community of people uh, to live in. So I think Roanoke actually started to attract people from other markets. The survey also suggests companies are anxious to get more people back in the office. 
More companies plan to make temp jobs a permanent part of their post pandemic workforce. A new survey from staffing firm People Ready finds 40% of companies are planning to make temporary jobs permanent. 65% of workers say they're considering temporary or part time work to earn more money. 625. Let's get back over to Chris with an update on your forecast, and it's a day we've been waiting a long time for. Absolutely, especially after the past few weeks of nothing but winter weather. It uh, feels wintry out there this morning. Temperatures in the 30s, but by 11 a.m. already temperatures in the 50s. So temperatures will be rising quickly throughout the morning. And even as we head into the afternoon, look at that South Boston. Right now you're in the upper 20s. You'll be in the upper 60s by the afternoon, pushing 70 degrees in Danville this afternoon. Maybe not quite as warm tomorrow, even still upper 50s and lower 60s. We'll take that in late February. Rain arrives later Friday, especially during the evening and overnight hours. Some showers around Saturday, perhaps more widespread rain around Sunday afternoon and into Monday morning. But notice even still not looking wintry with high temperatures throughout the weekend well into the 50s. 626, nearly 21 million Americans don't have access to Internet. Why that could change with the next COVID relief bill. But Prozum is in full effect today on Virginia Tech's campus. How you can get involved with the university's special giving day. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Students in Montgomery County will spend more time in the classroom when leaders have decided they'll bring kids back. As COVID cases drop, a spring surge may still be ahead. What you may be getting in the mail to help reduce the spread. The government says most Americans will be able to get COVID-19 vaccines by May, while local health officials say the outlook here in the Commonwealth could be different. Good morning to you. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for starting your day with us. I'm Rachel Lucas here with Patrick McKee and Jenna Zipton. Make sure you dress in layers. It is cold now, but Chris, mm -hmm. it is going to get a lot warmer. Absolutely. And for some reason, I think of Shrek, right? Ogres have layers and that just, <laughs> oh my I don't know. Everybody loves park face. Hey, at least you didn't say uh, the onion joke again. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's coming. We've still got another half hour. Oh, of news goodness. Left. All right, we got some clouds overhead for from our new college institute sky cam going to be a nice sunrise in Henry County where currently we're starting out at 29 degrees Blacksburg 31 Galax and Hillsville in the upper 30s and lower 40s so a little bit of a temperature inversion going on where the air is warmer above and cooler below but eventually we pull down some of that warmer air look at that in the highlands yeah we're starting in the low to mid 30s we're in the low to mid 60s by this afternoon so again make sure you wear layers as Jenna was saying because we'll kind of peel away from jacket to t-shirt weather as we go through the day today. Tomorrow, low to mid 50s in the Highlands, then low to mid 40s by Friday. We'll see some rain settling in during the evening. Some of that mixing with some wintry weather late Friday night, not expected to be a big deal. Rain carries over, especially on Sunday into Monday morning. Students in Montgomery County schools are headed back to the classroom more often starting next month. The school board approved a plan last night to move to phase three level three. That means four days a week in the classroom for those who want to be and one day online for everyone. The vote split the board four to three and required two nights of discussion before they voted. A survey found most teachers don't want to move forward while most parents do. A majority of the board say they've done what they need to make this happen. Beyond the expert opinion of these teachers, I think that to basically push that aside for no good reason is really, it's already causing morale issues, and I think we're just, we're going to exasperate our problems down the road. Parents should expect to hear from the division about individual student plans in the near future. Martinsville announced his plans to reopen schools on March 8th. For now, only preschool, kindergarten, and special population students in grades 3 to 12 will be in person. We're told packets with information on scheduling and transportation have been sent out. Health experts project new variants may fuel a spring COVID surge. A federal government, the federal government says it's doing what it can with talks of mailing masks to help limit the spread and working to pass a COVID relief bill. But as Britt Conway explains, medical experts say what happens next is up to us. I wake up every day to get through the day. It, everything is just, I have to get through this day. Don't worry about the next one. I blame myself. Mm -hmm. David blames himself. The doctor, 
blamed himself. Gigi Morse died from COVID-19. She was six years old, one of the more than 500,000 lives lost since the pandemic began. Still, experts like Dr. Anthony Fauci are cautiously optimistic. The infections per day are going down. But there are fears of another surge. A new report from the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy warns a more contagious variant could spike cases beginning in March. And the report suggests speeding up the vaccinations by skipping second doses for now. It's also crucial to practice safety measures we know work, like social distancing and wearing masks. President Joe Biden says the government will probably start sending out masks in the mail. We can't pull back on that and get complacent. Complacency is what Houston doctor Joseph Veron worries about, too. This is COVID. This is what COVID looks inside the lungs. He's worked every day for almost a year now. I'm exhausted, you know, I'm tired. I mean, it's day in and day out. In the meantime, lawmakers are trying to come to some kind of agreement on a COVID-19 relief bill. With news from the House Majority Leader that they plan to vote on the $1.9 trillion plan Friday. Britt Conway, 10 News, working for you. Once the House votes on the COVID relief bill, it'll move to the Senate. But with pushback from Republicans, it'll take a yes vote from every Democrat in the Senate for the bill to pass. Senator Mark Warner is stressing the importance of robust funding for broadband in any future COVID-19 relief package. According to current estimates, there are approximately 700,000 Virginians who still lack access to high speed Internet. I would argue over the last 11 months we've seen the broadband it is a necessity. Uh, I think it is absolutely COVID related. I, I hope that uh, the current package uh, can be changed to actually include a sizable investment in broadband as, as good as our um, four packages, bipartisan packages have been to date. Warner is pushing for the package to include at least $7 billion towards broadband. As the vaccine rollout continues, signs of hope from the nation's top infectious disease expert. Dr. Anthony Fauci says with how distribution is currently going, vaccines could become available to the general population by May. We asked Roanoke City and Allegheny Health District Director Dr. Cynthia Morrow whether that's a realistic projection in our area. I am hopeful. I certainly, I would love to be in the position where we can say in May that everybody who wants to have vaccine has access or is, or has an appointment for access. But I think we need to be a little bit cautious knowing that we've had some stumbles in the past. Morrow says shipping delays due to winter weather last week prove vaccine distribution is unpredictable. You won't have to wait in long lines at the DMV for some of your driving needs anymore. More online services have now been added. Drivers 18 and older can now replace their driver's license online. IDs ordered online will be mailed. And at 636, we're starting out chilly with temperatures in Blacksburg at about 31 degrees. A fairly clear sky overhead. Got some high clouds moving through, as you see here from our Virginia Tech sky cam. Also noticing the sun rising earlier and earlier. It'll go to quick work, especially as we head into the afternoon. Again, starting with clouds this morning, more sunshine through the rest of the day. High temperatures in the NRV, low to mid 60s, our warmest day since mid-December. Virginia Tech is bringing together the entire Hokie Nation to give back. How you can help students facing hardships during the pandemic. If storms move through your neighborhood and you safely take a photo or video, feel free to share it with us. Open the Weather Authority app, click pins on the bottom, then click drop a pin. You can upload your picture or video here. New this morning, show off your hokey pride today by giving back to the programs and organizations that make Virginia Tech special. Today is Giving Day. 10 News reporter Megan Woods joins us live with how you can get involved. Megan, good morning. Good morning. So Giving Day is a way Hokies from all over the world come together digitally. It all kicks off at noon and lasts exactly 24 hours. To give, you choose from a department, organization, or scholarship fund. Many of them have different challenges and prizes to get people to give in certain parts of the day. There are a lot to choose from, but it depends on how you want to help. Student Emergency Fund is definitely an area if you're interested to be, um, you know, able to kind of um, have an impact on our students here on campus dealing with the things that may come with the pandemic. Um, the Student Emergency Fund is a great way to, uh, to direct your gift. 
Donating isn't the only way you can show your support. You can also become an ambassador. For more information as well as a link to donate, we'll have that on WSLS.com later this morning. Live in the newsroom, Megan Woods, 10 News, working for you. 640 this morning, we want to turn back to our forecast where we have some good news today. Oh, yeah, if you liked yesterday, you're going to like today even more. Yeah, we're starting out chilly temperatures right around freezing in the Lynchburg area. But that's a distant memory by the afternoon. Look at that high temperatures well into the 60s after lunchtime. Get outside, enjoy it. The jet stream farther to the north, allowing that warm air to come in. But eventually it buckles south. And what that does is provides more opportunities for rain. I'll show you how much rain we expect throughout the weekend coming up in about five minutes. This puppy, take a look there, is being hailed a miracle. How she's beaten the odds after being born with a few extra limbs. A relic of the antebellum South, created by an enslaved woman before the Civil War. As we celebrate Black History Month, we'll explain how local historians are working to make sure history doesn't erase her past. This is 10 News, Virginia Today at 6, working for you. Giving a voice to the past and a woman back her name. A rare pre-Civil War coverlet is now on display at the Montgomery County Museum. As we honor Black History Month, I want to highlight a search by local historians who are working to uncover the identity of an enslaved woman who made it more than 150 years ago. Passed down through generations, a family story and this hand-woven coverlet is all that remains of the woman who made it. Just as slavery then erased her freedom, it continues today in erasing her past. Those public records that you can usually find for white families were not kept for African Americans. But here at the Montgomery County Museum sits a relic of the antebellum South. And so what they did is they just wove. Curator Sherry Wyatt says this coverlet was donated by the descendants of the Trigg family who owned a large plantation in what is today's downtown Christiansburg. It's a rare pre-Civil War piece that's been surprisingly well preserved. To have a piece from the times of slavery is huge in any, um, any way. She hopes they can eventually uncover the name of the enslaved woman who made it, who spent hours weaving it together on a loom just like this. For now, the search continues. But we feel that it's really important for us to be able to tell those stories because they are so frequently lost to us. There are some clues hidden within the blanket that can help historians find out more about its maker. Watch the full special tonight as we honor Black History Month here on 10 News at 7. Your local weather authority, always watching and tracking for you from the JES Weather Center. All right, time now, 646. Really cool shot for our picture of the day here. These sort of rare snow rollers that we can sometimes get off our car windshield. This from Chris and Manita, by the way. And back a few weeks ago when we had the snow, temperature was right around freezing so that snow was able to stick together. There wasn't enough wind to really dishevel it, and you had gravity doing its thing on the windshield, making it look like a little bit of a roll there. So nice shot, Chris, if you're watching. Thanks for today's picture of the day. And if you're like me, your car is just disgusting. After all the winter weather we've had, today's a perfect day to take care of that. 11 a.m. temperatures in the 50s, still a partly cloudy sky. Lots of sunshine as we head into the afternoon. Temperatures well into the 60s as we take you town by town. Rocky Mount at 65, Martinsville 66, Floyd at about 60, Lynchburg 68. Uh, ditto for South Boston with Alta Vista and Roanoke at about 67. So enjoy it. Get outside. If you're not washing the car, maybe toss the ball, take a walk. Do some grilling. Perfect day for that. Now, as we head into the overnight, we'll see some clouds on the increase, especially in the mountains. Very weak front moving in could produce a few light rain showers while most of us are asleep. 7 a.m. tomorrow, most of us are in good shape. So overnight, expect temperatures about 40 to 45 degrees. We'll call it a cool but tolerable as we get your Thursday started out. Now, Friday is going to start out with sunshine. Clouds will increase. Eventually, rain will increase in the evening. Could also see a little bit of a mountain mix. Not going to be a huge deal. Nothing like what we've seen over the past few weeks. But this does set us up with a pretty wet pattern. At least scattered showers on Saturday with more widespread rain Sunday. Some of that could be on the heavy side. And basically, what we're going to be dealing with is this front that's just kind of stalled out to the south. Disturbances ride along that and produce the chance for some heavy rain. In fact, you see that light green, that dark green over Virginia, indicating the chance for one to three
three inches of rain between Friday and Monday. So given how wet and how wintry things have been, there will be the chance for some localized flooding, something we'll keep an eye on as we go throughout the weekend. Your extended forecast for the new River Valley showing today is about as good as it gets over the next seven days. Low to mid 60s. We're about 10 degrees cooler tomorrow. Only in the 40s Fridays we see clouds increasing and a little bit of rain as well. Rain a part of the forecast throughout the weekend and into Monday morning, but even still high temperatures about 50 to 55 degrees for the Roanoke Valley mid to upper 60s today. Even tomorrow, not bad, but not quite as warm mid to upper 50s. 40s for highs Friday, then we're in the 50s throughout the weekend, despite the fact that we'll have some clouds and some showers around at times. Time now 648 following a wreck still on time saver traffic. Yeah, this has been going on since about 5 a.m. This is going to be northbound Interstate 81 in Wythe County. A tractor trailer crash before exit 72, I-77 there. So if you know anyone headed that way or you have to head that way, give yourself plenty of extra time. The uh, north left shoulder and left lane are closed then. Again, Interstate 81 northbound in Wythe County. There's a lot of fear and uncertainty with filing taxes this year and the pandemic. It's complicated things. We're working for you on what you need to know before you file. Experts say even if you're afraid that you're going to owe taxes, don't ignore filing. Even if you owe money, you don't have to pay until April 15th. Filing early also helps you avoid scams. If you file early, that means you'll get your refund faster. If you've been working from home, home office expenses are not eligible deductions. You've got to be an independent contractor or a freelancer in order to take those. The pandemic has many restaurants going all in on takeout. Over the past year, ghost kitchens, virtual or delivery only brands, have seen explosive growth as food delivery becomes more popular. Now big restaurant chains are joining in, hoping to win new customers and overcome slow traffic in dining rooms. Last week, Applebee's launched Cosmic Wings, a delivery only brand that Uber Eats will deliver. Other big chains like Chili's have gotten backlash online from customers who thought they were ordering from a new local business. Work around right now to understand whether or not you're ordering from a, a, a virtual concept is to just look at the address. Denny's also rolling out two virtual concepts this year called the Burger Den and the Meltdown. This tiny puppy is capturing hearts all across the country. Little Skipper is a miracle puppy beating the odds after she was born with six legs. A veterinary hospital in Oklahoma City said they believe she is the first dog with six legs to be born alive. She was just born a few days ago and vets say it's highly unusual for a puppy like her to survive this long. Skipper is a border collie in addition to her six legs. She also has two tails and the good news is that Skipper's already been adopted and her forever home has set up a GoFundMe to help with her medical bills. Just incredible. So cute as a butt. Yeah, mm -hmm. no. Look at that little face. <laughs> 651 now. We got five things you need to know coming up next. Stay with us. 654. Here's a look at five things you need to know before you head out the door this morning. Breaking overnight, golf legend Tiger Woods is awake and responsive, recovering in the hospital after a rollover crash yesterday. Uh, we learned the golfer suffered significant injuries to his lower right leg, including open fractures. Woods also received treatment to injuries on his foot and ankle. Authorities say the SUV he was driving went off the road and flipped. Hearings continue today as lawmakers look closer at the January Capitol riots. Today, lawmakers will focus on the rise of domestic terrorism to the health and wellness of employees and assessing damage to the historic building. Yesterday, officials admitted they declined help from the National Guard two days before the attack. Senators are calling for better training and equipment for Capitol Police, as the former chief revealed many officers didn't have riot gear or training in how to respond to a mass intrusion. This man, Paul Michael Dalton Jr., is in custody after a more than seven hour standoff in Pennsylvania County yesterday. He now faces three grand larceny charges. Investigators say they were serving an arrest warrant when he locked himself inside a home with a gun. Students in Montgomery County Schools headed back to the classroom more often starting next month. 
The school board approved a plan last night to move to phase three, level three, which means four days a week in the classroom, one virtual. Those who want to be there uh, will be in the classroom four days a week. Parents should expect to hear from the division about their individual students plan coming up in the near future. And we start you out with a live look across the region. Beautiful sunrise on tap. If you have the chance, take a picture, send it to us via pin it or through social media. Poor Mountain, Virginia Tech, the Roanoke Blacksburg Airport and Martinsville all looking wonderful so far this morning. A sign of good things to come. Yeah, we're starting out chilly temperatures in the 30s, but we're back into the 60s this afternoon. Soak it in even tomorrow. Not bad, just not quite as warm. Only in the 40s, though, by Friday, most of us seeing rain could see a little bit of a mountain mix, especially at nighttime. Showers at times Saturday with rain likely Sunday. Temperatures in the 50s throughout the weekend. Coming up next on today, Florida's stern warning to spring breakers during the pandemic. As we leave you this morning, a live look from the Roman Blacksburg Regional Airport. Look at that gorgeous sunrise okay. we're seeing. And thankfully, we are seeing some sunshine as we start off the day. Get outside and enjoy. It's going to be a nice one. I cannot wait for this afternoon to go on a walk, take my daughter to the playground. Enjoy this nice day ahead. Have a great day.